What's up, guys? Today we're talking about chain burn and the fact that it's just a fucking epidemic. And more and more people, I, I think, are playing chain burn. I could be wrong, but I just feel like I notice it more, especially at larger scale events, you know, above locals. Uh, just because it's not a real deck. Now, when I say that, I'm not saying it as a derogatory thing to people who play it, like maybe a little bit, but it, it's not. Uh, your method of winning is not the same as most decks out there. You're not attacking your opponent with monsters uh, to win. Now, I played Exodia for years, so I'm not, like, that's not a real deck. Like, I'll admit that. Like, and it doesn't, it's not, like, a bad thing to say, you know. It's just, it's shitty, and people are going to react shitty when you beat them with decks like this. But, I digress. Um, you know, I'm going to YCS Philly. Like, what, what do I do to prepare for Chain Burn? Well, it's tough. See, when I was playing the Churias before they got stolen, it was really easy. I didn't have to side for the most part. Uh... I would just summon Bamboo Shoot or Barkeon, and then I'd be really good. Um, Bamboo Shoot obviously is better, but and then just make sure you don't leave more than one monster on the field so they can't Lava Golem you. That being said, Lava Golem has its own answers and drawbacks and stuff, but it is a threat. So I guess the, that's my first tip: is be very careful with what you leave on the field because it could just get tributed off, and you can't do you can do nothing to respond unless prevent special summons to begin with. So I guess you could side Fossil Dyna because then they can't Lava Golem you, they can't uh, use Gores or... What am I thinking of, guys? Come on, help me. Battle Fader. Uh, they can't do that stuff. Is it the best side? Not really. But is it decent? Yeah. Um, Prohibition also kind of helps. Uh, you just call stuff like Just Desserts and Secret Barrel, but it's not like the best. It's okay. You know, if you have nothing else to do and you're siding Prohibition, which I like Prohibition. Like every other week I side it. Like I like it and I don't like it. I like it and I don't like it. Moving on. Um, I think what really makes Chainburn more dangerous is that there was a list going around basically that showed a Chainburn deck, very standard, but the side deck is Insectors. And... That's ridiculous, because after game one, most people playing against Chainburn are going to side... If they have sides that hurt Chainburn, they're going to take out monster removal, because that's mostly dead against Chainburn. You know, like your Compulse or your Bottomless is not going to do shit um, to Chainburn. So you take that stuff out, and then, and then they side into Insectors, and then you don't have answers to their bugs. Uh, I have seen this other this done other ways where you side into other decks, but the Insector one really sounds cool just because of the low monster count and the ability to just horn it and just rape your opponent, and it sucks and it's dumb. But it's like it, it it's dumb, but it's like it, it it looks like it would work, and it it worries me because it's going to provide a conundrum if I ever get paired up with Chamber in it in, in Philadelphia. Also, I think. As a non-chain burn player, I think that artifacts and the ice and fire hands uh, separately could be played in uh, chain burn. I think that that's like a really it's all, it's like an engine in a way, and it's also like opponent field removal, and it's something that if someone integrates them correctly, uh, I don't think both of them at the same time artifacts and hands. I think that's taking up too much deck space for what they're trying to do. But if someone integrates one of these archetypes, I guess they're archetypes. Um, into well, artifact is definitely an archetype. Uh, in, into chamber, and it can be really dangerous because now, you know, the whole the whole chamber versus not chamber matchup is chamber burns you a little bit. They set five, they burn you a, a little bit or a lot, whatever, and then you build up some monsters and you attack, and then they battle fader or scarecrow. And then next turn, you, you still have your field, unless they Lava Golem you. And then you build up more resources, and you put more damage on them, because you just need to kill them really quick, because they're going to kill you next turn, or maybe the turn after that. Like, it, it's, you know, if, if they drew decent. You just have to keep building and building and building, and if they stop that, it could be best deck. And it's, like, dumb to think about. Like, imagine Teledad format, but Chain Burn? Like, gross. Um... So I guess moral of the video is it really does come down to your specific deck. Like, I'm playing gadgets, and that's a terrible matchup because I put stuff on field relatively slowly. I'm trying to grind out my opponent, but that whole idea of grinding out your opponent doesn't work against traps that just burn you. Um, but, like, with Naturias, it was perfect because I it was it was naturally a good matchup. So it, it's I guess it's like any deck where it does have good and bad matchups, but you're just not going to expect it as much 
Because to be fair, it's not a real deck. So I guess this is more of a PSA than anything. Just remember that this deck exists and it's it, it, innovative people with new cards are going to make it better. So keep in mind, side your desk wombats. Have a great day.